There we go. <clears throat> Sorry for the delay. There were technical problems with the, um, the computer and all sorts of other excuses, but here we go. So as you remember last time, uh, our hero, Mordechai, is sitting in the gate of the, the, the king, and he's giving orders to our heroine, Esther. So Esther, she's really the hero of the whole thing. That's why it's called this, the Megillah of Esther, the story of Esther. <clears throat> so she goes in to see the king uninvited, which is flirting with death. If the king doesn't stick out his scepter, he doesn't hold out his scepter, then whoever comes in uninvited is on the spot killed. So nevertheless, she fasts for three days, and tells everyone to fast for three days, and she goes in to see the king uninvited. And miraculously, he sticks out his, he holds out the scepter, and he says, wow, I really like you, Esther. You're really something. Anything you want. You know what? I'll give you half of the kingdom. You want half of the kingdom? So any normal person would say, sure, half of the kingdom. Yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted. And the king would say, so it will be. She didn't say, no. What do I want? I want that you and Haman should come with me tomorrow, come to me tomorrow, and we're going to make a, a meal, a fast, a feast. I'm sorry. And we're going to make a feast. That's what I want. And by Yomar Amalek, so the king said, Maru at Haman, tell Haman to quick, hurry, Lasot at the Barister, and to do what Esther said. By Abu Amalek, Haman, and Haman and the king went to the meal that Esther had prepared for them. Now, we talked about this yesterday. There were several reasons why Esther didn't just immediately say, you want to give me half of my kingdom? Don't give me half of the kingdom. Just save the Jewish people. That's all. That's nowhere near half of your kingdom. You know, half of the kingdom means he has what she's, he's going to give her, like 64 countries or something. He, he owns 127 countries. So he's going to give him, right? 64. So I got an easier deal. Just don't kill the Jews. That's pretty easy. That's much easier. But she doesn't. Why doesn't she do it? First of all, there, there's a lot of opinions about this. Why? One of the reasons they say is, is that she wanted the Jews to really be serious about this. If, if it was too, I'd say easy come, easy go. If, if the Jews just got forbidden, forgiven immediately, so then uh, they might not really take it seriously. Number two, she wanted to invite Haman to the meal because then the Jews would say, maybe we haven't, now we really don't have anybody to trust. We thought that maybe Mordechai and Esther, they were our friends, and now we see she's inviting Haman to the meal. What's that? Another, another reason is she wanted the king to start to wonder, what, why is she inviting Haman? What's Haman got to do with it? I thought, you know, she's my wife. Was she inviting Haman? Even though the king loved Haman and the king gave him all this power, but the king was also very, um, this, very, uh, how do you say, suspicious all the time. That's what kings are. And another reason is, is because she didn't want the king just to immediately say, okay, you know, I'll save the Jews. Because Ahasuerus was, didn't have a very high IQ. And it seems that he had a really terrible memory as well. So when you link that together with his terrible personality that he had, and that he was just running after his pleasures all the time. <clears throat> so th she thought that maybe he'll say, okay, you know, I'll save the Jews. And tomorrow he'll say, Jews? What are you talking about? I didn't say anything like that. So therefore she wanted to draw it out for a while. So he says, okay, tell Haman to come to the meal. Also, she, another reason is, is that if there is a miracle and that the king decides he wants to get rid of Haman, he'll be right on hand. Haman will be right there on hand, and the king won't have time to, um, to reconsider about killing Haman if he decides to do so. We'll see. Let's go. Ready? This is Haman. The king said to Esther at the meal. Now they already reached the meal, right? What do you want, Esther? I'll give you, uh, I'll give it to you. What is your request? Until half of the kingdom, right? I'm, I'm repeating it over again. You can see that I'm really serious over here. 
<clears throat> okay, the 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 the, uh, the, the Malbim <clears throat> is um, explains like this that the all of the different commentators they have different opinions about what's going on here. <clears throat> what did exactly she want? What is it the request? <clears throat> the important is the important thing is. Anirza el Ashoel Tikra Bakasha says that a person that wants a request, so it's called a Bakasha, a request. Kemasha, <clears throat> for instance, a person that wants a thousand dollars in order to buy uh, with them a, a, a piece of land. So the thousand dollars or the thousand pieces of gold, that'll be a Sha'ala, that'll be his request. But the sada is the bakasha. That the sada is the thing that he's requesting, and that's what he said. <clears throat> what is your shaila? What do you want? And what is And what is the thing that I should actually give you? So he's saying to her, this is not two different things. It's one thing. Whatever you ask, that's what you're going to get. The, namely, the and what did she say? I want you and Haman to come to the meal. He says that's the whole. That's all I want. That's all I want. That's what she said. Okay, let's just go further. <clears throat> Esther said, so now they're at the meal. And they're sitting at the meal. Haman's there. The king is there. And they're eating. And they're enjoying. And um, Esther said, my request is like this. What is my request? What, what, what do I want? <clears throat> Says, if I find favor in the eyes of the king. And if I'm the king, it's good to give what I ask and to fulfill my request. Then the king and Haman should come to the meal that I'm going to make for them tomorrow. And if you come tomorrow, then I'm going to do whatever the king wants. And what does the king want? That Esther should tell him what nation she's from. She, she, was, she had to do everything. Anything the king asked, she had to do. But this she refused to do. Only one thing she refused the king is to tell the king what exactly he wants. What does he want? So the, the, the Malbim says like this. <clears throat> it means to say that there's two conditions. Number one, it has to be, she said, what did he say? That if I find favor in the king's eyes, number one, then it'll be, it'll be a good thing. And number two, that what is going to be good in front of the king? That it's not against your will. Because what is against your will, says Esther, I'm never going to ask a thing like that. Because I don't want that you should ever change your mind because of what I want. And I, I, want, I want only for your good. Then the king is going to come to the second meal. And then she said, they're going to do what, whatever the king wants. Because what? The, she's saying, I'm going to request something from you King, that's for your own good. You're going to enjoy it. But this is what you really want. And then I'm going to say and tell you who I am. Okay. Cool. Haman went on that day happy and good hearted. And what, but he's going to go home and start bragging. But on the way, Haman sees Mordechai. And Mordechai is sitting on the gate of the king. And Mordecai did not stand up, and he didn't even move for him. Now, everybody else is bowing down to Haman. Haman is not used to seeing someone. Now, Haman is at the, not at the height of his power. He is at the very apex of his uh, influence on the king. The king gave him his ring. He can do whatever he wants to. He's already got the okay to kill all the Jews. And he's invited to the king's meal together with the queen. Everything is going his way except for one thing. All the Jews are bowing down to him. Everybody's completely negated to him. Only one person is standing in his way, and that is Mordechai. And Mordechai has absolutely no power whatsoever. He could kill Mordechai in one instant. As soon as he sees Mordechai, he gets filled with anger. Now, there's a midrash that says, let's see, Rashi brings it down. No, it doesn't bring it down. There's a midrash that says that <clears throat> Mordechai... And, um, and, 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 and Haman, they went to see the king before 
<clears throat> Haman rose up to power. I think there was the king of evil Murdoch. That was the king that was right before. In any case, they went to see the king and they wanted to request that they, uh, they, he should resume building the holy temple. Mm -hmm. Whatever happened, I don't know, but they were both given. Uh, of course, he didn't resume it. They, but what happened was is they both took a lot of food with them and water and Haman being a glutton, so he ate up all of his food and drank all of his, his own water. So Mordecai considered just letting him starve to death and die. But instead, Mordecai said, okay, you know what? Uh, I could just leave you here and let you starve and, and die of thirst. But I'm willing to give you food on the condition that you write a deed to me, that you're my slave, that you belong to me. You're my slave. And Haman said, sure, no problem. You know, I'll do anything you want. I don't want to die. But bring a piece of paper. So they have no paper in the middle of the desert. So he said, okay, write it here on the inside of my shoe. Or he wrote it on some sort of a cloth of, or, or parchment, and he put it into Mordecai's shoe, into the shoe, so that I guess he was stepping on the, on, on the, on the blank part of it and the written part of it was underneath. Whatever it was, it was in his shoe. So as soon as Mordecai, so of course now Mordecai, he's the head of the whole business. So I'm sorry, Haman is the head of the whole show. He's number two to the king. So nobody's going to do anything to him. But the fact is, is that Mordecai does have this deed that Haman is really his slave. And he can show it anytime he wants to. He can go to the newspapers, who knows, whatever they do over there. Anyway, he has this deed. And he's holding it up in front of Haman all the time. Everyone's bowing down to Haman. And he's whole, anytime he sees Haman, he holds up the shoe. And Haman realizes, well, that's the one I, I sold my life to him. And I can't. Now, it's not nice if Haman just starts losing his temper and killing people for no reason. But now he's got a good reason. Now we could really kill a Mordechai. Call or kill Mordechai. But what happens? He gets all angry. And Vietapakaman. And Vietapakaman. And Haman, uh, how do you say he 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 um he controlled himself, held himself back. He went to his house and he sent to all of his friends. And he also called his wife, Zeresh Ishto. What happened? He said he held back his anger. He held back his anger because he was afraid to take revenge without permission from the king. Therefore, he, he, I think so he, um, there's a word for it in English. I can't remember what the word is. He, um, anyway, he held himself back. I'll think of it, of what the word is. Ish. Tenir in French. What's Ish Tenir? Uh, you have any? It's old French. This is old French from like 800 years ago. You have any old Frenchman? If you know some 800 year old Frenchman, you can ask him what this means. Ish Tenir. Okay, so he sublimated, sub, what was it? Sublimated his anger. He held it back and he says, I'm going to get him though one day. Uh, you'll see, I'll get this. So Haman told about all to his, he, he's got his, all, all of his friends and his wife, and he told about his great richness and how many children he's got and how the king has made him great and how he elevated him on, on, above all the other ministers and the advisors for the king. He's the greatest, nothing like him. And Haman now says, Haman said, Esther, the queen, didn't bring anyone with the king to this meal that she's meeting, making except for me. That's what was today. He, he's coming back from the meal. And also tomorrow, I'm also called to be with her and the king alone. But, says Haman, you think I'd be happy? You think I'm satisfied? Calls ain't no It's not worth anything to me. The call ate all the time. I see Mordechai the Jew sitting in the gate of the king. Now, it already said earlier that everybody was bowing down to him. Mordechai refused. And that, that, that um, uh, Haman hated the Jews. Hated the Jews. This woke up some sort of a new identity inside of himself. He hates the Jews, can't stand the Jews. 
says, Einenu shal v'li, Einenu chash l'kol ha-kavod, Asherli, I don't have any, uh, I need to say, appreciation for any of this success and glory that I see as so, as long as I see Mordechai. Mordechai wrecks the whole thing up. Omer Rabbeinu, he says, the rabbis say, this is the story I just told you, that Mordechai was showing him the deed that he had, that Haman sold himself to Mordechai because he didn't have any food when they, Kishimanu Roshe Gaisot, Mordechai and Haman in one, in one war. Okay, whatever it was, they were traveling together and Haman sold himself to Mordechai for food. And Mordechai would always keep reminding of this. And it always was of some sort of a miracle why Haman did not take his, his anger out on Mordechai, why he didn't do it. All of a sudden, something, all the time, something would happen to save Mordechai at the last minute. And he, listen to what he's going to say. He said, said to him, Zeresh, his wife, to Haman, and all of his good friends, I got, we got advice for you, Haman. Go, t- take it easy. Take it easy, Haman. Don't go overboard. We need you. We need you, Haman. You're, you're, without you, we're lost. Listen, make a tree that's 50 amas high. Don't go and just kill him, Mordechai, and stab him in the street. Advertise it to everybody. Uh, advertise it. Make a tree that's 50 amas high. Now, 50 amas high means about 75 feet high, or something like that, which means about seven stories high, something like that, a little bit more maybe. So Higher than seven stories. Seven stories, that's pretty high. I don't know if there were many buildings that were that high. And in the morning, tell the king what you want to do and hang Mordechai on this tree that so everyone can see it. Everyone, first of all, is going to see this big gallows being built, right? This big gallows being built. So that's going to catch everybody's eye. And then you can hang Mordechai on it in the morning before you go to the meal, huh? A preparation before the meal. Then you go with the king to the meal happy. Huh? And he was. Haman loved the idea. They thought of Haman, and Haman loved the idea, and he made the tree, seven-story high tree. But that's the end of this chapter. Okay, things are looking pretty bad for the Jews. Well, only one ray of help is Esther. Okay. Now, I think I have this, I know how this thing works. So let's see if this works. Not, didn't work. Last time I did it. Okay, I, I got another tr- plan over here. Here we go. Oh. Oh. Oh, there it is. See? There it is. There it is. Yes, yes. See, experience pays off. All right. I hope everybody can see this, but if not, let's just go like this. One second. Let's go here. Make it smaller. Go over here. And let us share, share. Oh, this should be visible to everybody. <clears throat> but Laila, who now this is before, okay, so this is a, a, a packed day, a really active day. Esther makes the meal. Haman goes home, tells her, his friends, they tell him to build this gallows 50 amas high, let's say you know, 75 feet high gallows. Starts working on that night. And Balayla, who in the Dashinat all of a sudden on that night, the king can't sleep. It wasn't because he had indigestion from the meal that he had in the daytime. He can't sleep. He's really happy. He's got his, his, own, his beautiful wife. He has a, a trusted advisor. Haman rules over the whole world. He's going to get rid of the Jews. King is happy. But that night, suddenly he can't sleep. Why can't he sleep? Now, there's, certain, there's other opinions that say he can't sleep because he's starting to think, well, look at Rashi. He's starting to think to himself, why in the world 
Did Esther invite Haman? I can't figure it out. The king is trying to figure it out. What in the world has she got to do with this Haman? I mean, she's my wife. What's she inviting this guy for? Anyway, so he can't sleep. And he said, in those days, they didn't have sleeping pills or, you know, hypnotism or something like that. So he said, no, no television, right? What, what could he do? Internet. So he said, you know what? Bring me this my uh, diary, Sefer Zichronot, my book of chronicles that I wrote, Divre Yamim, the, 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 the history of the days, whatever is my, my same thing. And you, Nick Green, before the bell, let them be read before me, right? You bring a servant and have him read out to me what is written there. Of course, I mean, you know, there's, there's a lot to be read there. He figured somebody will read it to him and he'll get bored and he'll go to sleep. It says this, this, the king couldn't sleep that night. Nace, oh yeah, it was a big miracle. Yeshua means some people say, some people say it wasn't a miracle, that all of a sudden he started worrying, why did he, Esther, invite Haman? <clears throat> Haman, now the king is starting, maybe Esther put her eyes on Haman, maybe she likes Haman. And maybe also both of them together will put their eyes on him, on the king, and they'll kill him, right? So the king said, bring the book of history of the, whatever is the, 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 um, the notes, from my life, my, my, the derech hamalachim. It's the way of the kings that when when their their sleep is uh, they can't go to sleep, they say, "Bring me uh, somebody to tell me all sorts of stories and 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 mashalim and all sorts of parables and things," until they get bored and they go to sleep. The rabbis say that what happened was is that. He put his heart on Haman and Esther. And he said, If someone, if they're really making some sort of a plan against me, someone must know about it. Someone must know about it. Someone that's my trusted friend. And he'll tell me. And one day, then he went back and he thought, listen, maybe I, someone once did do me a favor and I didn't repay him. And that's why People are sort of keeping away from me. They don't want to, because I don't repay people. And then people, they, they're not worried about me. They don't care about me because somebody helped me once and I didn't repay them. I didn't even say thank you. And therefore, people are, are they ref, they're refraining from helping me. And they say, what should I risk myself and tell the king? It's not going to help anyway. So therefore, he said, bring me the uh, the daily you know, news from the, what I wrote. Every single day, let's see. Maybe there's somebody that I owe something to. I owe something. I didn't pay him back. So they brought the Yimotze Katsuv. One second. Yeah, the Yimotze Katsuv. So they brought it and was read. They say that it was the angel Gabriel. We'll see. They say that his his advisor was a good friend or a son of Haman, one of the Haman's sons. And he tried not to read from this part, but the angel Gabriel or whatever kept uh, turning the page. And it was found that it was written. Asher Higid Mordechai, that Mordechai was the one that informed on these two assassins, Bigtana Beterish, two of the advisors of the king, two of the helpers of the king. And they are the, 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 the protectors of the treasury. And they wanted to kill King Ahasuerus. Huh? Wanted to kill Ahasuerus. There it is. It's written there clearly. And the king said, oh, what was repaid uh, glory or greatness to Mordecai that, um, that he saved my life? I mean, the man saved my life. I, I don't remember repaying him. What, what did he get? Maybe my memory, just like I forgot Mordecai, Maybe I'm forgetting how I paid him. And the, the, the servants of the king said, the, the, the young men that were serving the king, you never repaid him at all. You know, you just took it for granted that, you know, people are supposed to kill, save the king. The king said, um, 
Who's in the who's in the in the in the in the, in the front yard? Haman came. Haman it just happened to come in the front yard. Why did he come there to tell the king to hang Mordechai on the tree that he prepared? Huh? Couldn't come at a worse time. And the young boys, the servants of the king said, Haman is here in the front yard. And the king said, oh, tell him to come. Tell him to come. I'd, I'd like to see Haman, exactly the man I would like to see. Now, he doesn't know that Haman wants to, to kill the king. Right? doesn't know the king. He didn't tell the king he's building this gallows in order to kill Haman. The gallows is being built. The king didn't notice it. And Haman came. And the king said, What should be done with a person that the king wants to give him a present, glory, to glorify him? Haman, of course, thought in his heart, wow, this is amazing luck. I, I thought I couldn't get any higher and greater. And here it is, I'm getting, I'm getting the whole jackpot over here. But Yomer Haman, Haman said in his heart, Who would the king want to give glory more than me? Right? Obviously, it must be me. Haman thought he was the greatest person in the world. If the king wants to do honor to somebody, it's probably to me. Vayomer Haman, the king, king, Haman said to the king, a person that the king wants to give him honor, glory, let him take the garment of the king that the king puts on and the horse that the king rides on and, and put the crown of the king on his head. And put the garment and the and, and bring the garment and the, the the horse should be brought to more to the to this to this person that the king wants to honor. One of the kings of the kids must be taking him to the dentist or something. Kids, okay. You should. Put these clothes on the person that the king wants to honor. And put them on this horse in the, in the street. But he doesn't say put the crown on his head. He, he figures this might be too much. Haman is thinking this is me. Haman is thinking that he wants to, that he's going to get all this. But Karl of Anov, and he should have someone walk before this man the king wants to honor. And the person should yell out, this is what is done to a person that the king desires his glory, his favor. Okay, now remember what's going on here. According to what Rashi said, the king is worried that maybe he doesn't have any, any trusted friends anymore. Maybe people aren't doing him a favor. He's worried, a very far worry, but maybe Esther and Haman are plotting to kill him. And if it's really so, someone should know the truth about this and no one's coming forth. So the king said, maybe the reason is, is because I just don't have any friends. Maybe someone did me a favor and I never repaid him. So now all of a sudden the king finds someone who did him a favor, Mordechai, and the king never repaid him. So he said, I'm going to repay him big and everyone's going to know about it. He's going to be taken through the streets on my horse and someone's going to be calling in front of him. Um, this is what the king does to anyone who favors him. Now, Haman is, thinks the king is talking about him. Haman thinks that the king just loves him so much that he's going he's willing to relinquish his own horse and his own uh, cloak just to put it on Haman. So Haman is just really overjoyed. Not only that his wife already told him that, you know, kill Haman, kill Mordecai, now is your time. You know, your, 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 your luck is shining today. <clears throat> Rashi says, <clears throat> And Haman said, put 
the garment and the give him the garment and the horse to this person you want to give, give glory. But it, it says the keter loan is here. But Haman didn't dare mention putting the crown on his head because he saw that the, the eyes of the king, there was something wrong going on over there. And he said, the, the, the crown, the, if he would mention putting the crown on somebody's head, the king might say, ah, so you want me to give up my crown? Huh? So he didn't mention the crown. Okay, now Haman thinks in the ne next second, the king is going to say, congratulations, Haman. You are the man. I really like you. You're my man. Omer Amalek, the king, says to Haman, my hair, quickly, take the garment. And Haman is saying, yes, yes, yes. And the horse. Yes, yes. Like you said. And do it all to all this to Mordechai Yehudi, Mordechai the Jew. Hayoshev that is sitting Bishara Melech in the gate of the king. Alta Peldavar, let nothing be lacking. Mikola Shir Dibarta from whatever you said. I, Haman had no choice. Haman took the garment and he took the horse and he put the garment on Mordechai and Mordechai got on the horse. It says there's a, a midrash that says that Mordechai said, I can't get up on a horse. I'm not used to riding a horse. You bend down and I'll stand on you and you'll be my ladder going up on the horse. And he rode him through the city and he yelled in front of him. This is what is done to the person that the king desires in his glory. <clears throat> Oh, here's a beautiful. Maybe we'll do this next time. Told us Aaron. It says there's a midrash that his daughter, uh, Haman's daughter, he had these uh, sons, ten sons, but uh, one daughter is a she. She was really happy. She saw here this somebody's being led through the streets, and someone's saying this is what the king does to someone who he honors. She figured the one sitting on the horse was her father, and the one pulling him was Mordechai, so she threw a big bucket of manure. In those days, they didn't have, uh, you know, plumbing and things like that. Threw a big bucket of something, anyway, some nasty substance on who she thought was Mordechai, the one leading the horse, the despised Jew. And in fact, it came out that the one leading the horse was her father. So she, she added, I want to call it injury to insult. He was already insulted that he had this. Now she threw this bucket of, of, uh, of waste on his head. And she said when she saw that, she jumped out of the window. But Mordecai went back to the, uh, the gate of the king. And Haman went back to his house. <coughs> now he is really mourning and with a bowed down head. Said Mordecai went back. What do you mean he went back? He went back in his sackcloth. And it's fasting. This is still the third day. He's still fasting over here. Abu Fakhaf Rosh, the rabbis explain, because right, the fast came out to be on the 13th, 14th, 15th. So this is the 14th was the first day, and the 15th was the second day, the second meal. Second meal. So he's still fasting, Mordechai. So was Esther, that meal. Okay, now that was the preparation, and now uh, Haman goes home. Haman goes home, takes a bath, and he speaks to his wife, Zeresh, and to all of his friends, and <clears throat> at everything that happened to him. Call Shekaru, Vayomulu, and they said to him, Chachamov, his advisors, Vazeresh Ishto and his wife, Imizera Yehudim Mordechai, if from the seed of the Jews, Imizera Yehudim Mordechai, if he's from the Jews, then you began to fall down, you're going to fall down completely. There's no way you're going to be saved. Because the Jews, it says, Omar Umazu, this nation is like the stars. That's what she said. This nation is like the stars, and they're also compared to the dirt. Right? God promised Abraham that his children will be like the stars of the sky and to Jacob, he said, it's going to be like the dirt of the earth. He said, when they descend, the Jewish people, then they descend to the dirt. Right? We saw it. Those are all bowing down to Haman. They're all, but when they're elevated, they go up even above the stars. And now they're starting to be elevated. 
I'm, I'm afraid that your end is near Haman. They're still speaking. And the ministers of the king arrived by Avhilu, and they hurried up to bring Haman. That Haman, that, that, that Esther made to the second meal. Now they are going to begin the second meal, and that ends the fifth, uh, the sixth. That ends the sixth chapter from the 10 chapters. The next chapters are a little bit bigger, actually. The next chapter, the next one is a real action packed. Um, <clears throat> Action packed chap chapter. Everything just gets turned around, and there's also intrigues going on over here. And we'll talk about it, God willing, tomorrow. Be with us tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, 8:15, Chasidut. I'm sorry I did not put up the classes on time today, and I have a lot of good excuses, which is not now the time to put up. But they are up now. The, the, the Torah or class and the Devar Malchut class is up, and now this class is going to be up also. God bless you all. Have a good day with Mashiach now.